Leadership is made up of core competencies that represent observable behaviors and skills that enable the most efficient use of talent and abilities to accomplish shared goals. However, common competencies are a non-common virtue. This is IR Leader. Hey everybody, today we're going to start, we're going to do a little, a little something different today. Same, same, but different, but still same? Same, same. Same, same. <laughs> uh, we're going to go over the five core competencies of uh, leadership. And we are taking our information for all of you out there fact-checking us. We're pulling this from the uh, University of Indiana or Indiana University's website. So what are the five core competencies? They are ensures accountability, collaboration, instills trust, values differences, and customer focus. Ooh, Ooh customer focus. Mm. Staff competency, that got me right then and there. <laughs> yeah, the staff competency, that's, uh, let's just call that questionable in many organizations. <laughs> <laughs> Oh man, uh, j just right off the bat, man, like I can tell, like, um, there's a lot of people who need to read this shit. And even if they did read it, they probably think like, oh, I'm an expert. I already know what the hell they're doing. I can write this book 20 times over. And I just, I can't begin to tell you just how much you, how much you think you're a superstar. You're really not. Yeah. yeah and all those who are saying that they know are the ones who need to read this the most. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, I mean, cause I can admit like we're, we're, we're pretty influential, but even we need to learn some stuff. There's things that we need to tighten up on. There's things we need to kind of polish up and there's stuff we just flat out don't know. We can admit that, but there are those, and I'm sure we've all have witnessed this. They just feel like they're God's gift to basically everything. Yeah, there's no wrong that they can do. They are the best, or so they think. <laughs> yeah. And uh, I'll tell you one thing that they have is that self-confidence. They, uh, they don't doubt themselves any way, shape, or form, which can be a good attribute to some extent, but ultimately it'll be their own downfall <laughs> is, is how I view it. The sad part is, is like... Um... You kind of want them to fail, those that are like that. But when they do, they tend to take people with them. Well, you're exactly right. That's the first thing <laughs> that popped in my head. Like, ha, ah, they're going down. And you're like, wait a minute. Wait a minute. I'm on the same platform. They're dragging down too. Stop. Right. Get off me. Quit grabbing my pant leg. Right. You know what I mean? Because uh, they're. it's all me, me, me. When times are good. When times are bad, it's we, we. Right. You know, I call those me monsters. Mm. me 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 me, <laughs> me now <Yeah. laughs> until until the spotlight is on them for all the wrong reasons then it's like you you <laughs> it was all them i had nothing to do with it. i told them they shouldn't have done that i'm like bitch we just did what you directed right like where was this <laughs> where was all this <laughs> where was all this set so the core competencies right mm -hmm. if you instill these core competencies you can leverage talents and abilities of employees and teams to better achieve the fundamental mission of serving your organization uh your unit your your hangar team your maintenance crew whatever the case uh it's not just i mean it's yes yeah, a leadership level but really you can instill it on any level right uh no matter if you're day two in the shop or year 47 like you can you can add, get added value by by incorporating the core competencies right <laughs> <laughs> I, I think that's the key word right there competency <laughs> <laughs> competent you mean i gotta know what i'm doing <laughs> we had one of the leaders at work the other day he's he said the word competent and i said you can't use words you can't spell <laughs> <laughs> corporate corporate comp ko potentials <laughs> potent close enough <laughs> what'd you say about impotency that's not what i said at all <laughs> i mean take it for what it was i mean you heard what you heard <laughs> <laughs> all right so the first of the core competencies is ensures accountability 
holding self and others responsible and accountable to meet commitments. Let, let me just stop you there because that's already strike 12. <laughs> that strikes one through 12. <laughs> like, we fucked up. <laughs> what do you mean hold others accountable? Oh, yeah, yeah. You fucked up? Uh, it's your fault. Well, yeah, you had a hand in it too. Nay says I. Hey. That's what goes into what we were just talking about. Right. Everybody's like, yeah, me. It's all good. I'm the best. Oh, I'm my ass is on the line. Uh, well, see, nobody held me accountable, so I can't be held responsible. Oh, <laughs> how many times? Oh, my God. I'm like, I'm getting triggered right now. <laughs> like, how many times have you heard that? Right. Like, well, no one told me I couldn't do it. Like, I wish I could say maybe once on an annual basis. But right now it's it's almost weekly. One of those. Well, yeah, I should have been doing that. But nothing says I had to. Right. Well, yeah, but like that's why I'm telling you now, like I'm holding you accountable. Now you need to hold yourself accountable as well. It's one of the core competencies. No, no, <laughs> only only you hold me accountable. And if you didn't do that, if you didn't tell me to do my job, then I didn't. It's not my fault. It's your fault. Oh, so many, so many times, man. And uh, I can think of like 15 right now, all in the span of like three days. <laughs> Just the. <ugh. laughs> I know. It's uh, it's frustrating to say the least. Uh, I'm thinking of one specific situation with a, a person at work, and they don't work in my my area, my group, uh, but they work with my group, so to speak. Yeah. And this one individual, it's just week after week where they're like, "You're like, hey, you know, you, you're catching a fail over here. You didn't do this. Oh well, it's because we don't have it in my document. Um, I've been telling everybody it needs to be updated. Right. You control that. That's your document. You control that. You make the changes. Nope. <laughs> like people are excellent at pointing out problems. Mm -hmm. Essentially walking into the room, throwing grenades, grenade problem. Boom. <laughs> and just walking away. And it's everybody else's responsibility. They, they hold, uh, they have no stake in it. Right. So right. people love to point out problems without coming up with a solution with it. Oh. That's why I just say, that's why I just had this conversation today. I said, I'm sick of us walking into the room and throwing fucking grenades and just leaving. I said, because it leaves it to all, all these, all this management to resolve these problems when you brought no solutions. And this is even from, even from, you know, my own team. I said, I said, you can throw the grenade, but you got to have the solution afterwards, right? You can't just walk away because you're leaving it to me to clean up. And guess what? Papa's tired of cleaning. <laughs> <laughs> uh, oh, what, what's another one, man? What's a common one that's really relative? Um, the the manual didn't tell me that I shouldn't do it. How many times have you heard some shit like that, right? Like, yeah. Well, of course, it's not going to tell you what you shouldn't do. It's going to tell you what falls in the tolerance of you shall do. You're so right. if it falls out, if it's outside of that, that's kind of like an under, understood statement. Like you should not do that. Yeah. <laughs> it didn't tell me not to use a hammer on this on this uh, delicate and uh, finely tuned piece of equipment. Well, I mean, like common sense would have kicked in at that point. So, so with that, right, we say we're like, well, common sense would say you don't fix a Swiss watch with a sledgehammer. <laughs> and you're like, yeah, and their defense is, but it didn't tell me not to use a sledgehammer. And you're like, yes, but no, like, so you can't get me in trouble. And you're like, no. And you're like, I have to change an entire document because of one fucking idiot. Right. And can you imagine, man, like if, like if all I'm, the caveats and addendums you have to put into stuff. Right. Just because people won't hold themselves accountable. Like, dang, I messed up. You're right. You're right. I shouldn't have done that. I messed up. Okay. Now I know better. We're all learning from it. But people are so worried. They're just like, nope. And you can't get me in trouble. <laughs> right. And you just want to smash them with that sledgehammer that they tried to fix the Swiss watch with. Well, yeah. Like even say like with a Swiss watch, right? It's like you shall use these tools because they are delicate parts. When you say you shall use this, that's kind of like an instant, like shall not do anything else but this. Yeah. When it says shall this, it's, it's understood that you shall not use anything else. Right. I can't believe I, it's one of those like you shall what am I trying to say? You shall service your engine with oil. <laughs> well, I didn't service it and the motor blew up. Didn't tell me not to put oil in there. 
or it didn't tell me, you know, I'm getting, you know, I, get, yeah. I don't know. I'm getting frustrated. Yeah. It's like, it, it didn't tell me that I shouldn't do it. Like, well, obviously, yeah. but it, it didn't tell me not to put sand in, in as a replacement for engine oil. And you're like, well, yeah, but I shouldn't have to tell you that. I have to tell you not to put sand in your engine as a replacement <laughs> for oil. Like, right. Or sky drill for oil, for instance, for that one listener who said, oh this my thing. God. Yeah. <sighs> what a half wit. Yeah. And then what was so crazy about that, man, going back to that. And then we're reading a federal document mm -hmm. that says, oh, yeah, there's a big problem with people putting, you know, Skydrill in place of engine oil. I can't believe that's that's so common. Yeah. That the federal government had to make notes of it. <laughs> <laughs> For real. Right. So how would you show uh, being accountable? Right. Uh, first of all. Uh, as we kind of said, we'll, we'll kind of like summarize it down. A, you follow through on your commitments and make sure others do the same. Wild. Fucking wild. Yeah. Uh, act with a clear sense of ownership. What? Say it ain't so. <laughs> yeah, I know. Or take personal responsibility for your decisions, actions, and failures. That's one thing I can't stand. Somebody says, I'm taking lead on this. And then they make a call and it blows up. I'm like, nope. And then they just wipe their hands like, hold, hold on, man. You were given the opportunity to run the show. Mm -hmm. And the call you made blew up. You got to learn from that and move on. You can't just wipe your hands up and be like, oh, it's not not my, not my problem anymore. Like, no, nah, you don't get to fucking crash the ship and then go, what did you do? You know what I mean? <laughs> yeah. You know, or like you, you, uh, you run the ship aground and you say, well, the Admiral didn't tell me to turn left. I'm like, so? <laughs> <laughs> but it. Anybody would know not to take the boat and drive it into land. <laughs> <laughs> right. Uh, or how, how about uh, design feedback loops into work? Right. So, right. you know, uh, part of being held accountable is to be able to accept people's criticism. It's hard for any of us to do. Don't get us wrong. That's a hard, hard thing for myself, for six, anybody you meet. Nobody likes to be criticized. Right. Yeah. But it's it's a necessary part of honing and defining your skills as a leader. Yeah. Cause you're not going to make everybody happy all the time. And it's one thing I'm still learning mm -hmm. in my new current role. I get, I get criticisms all the time from my own personnel to other leaders in the organization with which I work. Hey, we like what you did there. We don't like what you do there. And and it's hard to hear sometimes. You're like, damn it, I thought I really really nailed it. Really that. nailed at that time. But turns out I have the big red clown nose on. <laughs> honk honk. Like, <laughs> you know what I mean? Yeah. It's just it's just what it is. Yeah. And um actually you hit the nail on the head. Sometimes there's gonna be those you could just never please ever. And they'll find nitpicky bullshit for fucking anything. Sometimes, you know, there's some truth to what they say. Sometimes their complaints are valid. And they're just some things you just can't change. And they're, maybe they're not seeing it, right? Yeah. Or they, they're poking holes that you never knew were there. That again, it, uh, you got to take it for what it's worth sometimes. If it's just the guy randomly bitching, got it. Yeah. But sometimes, you know, like uh, he get those individuals that they just, the only way for them to get their voices heard is to just bombard you by volume. <laughs> Man. Oh my gosh. You just, I call them used car salesmen. Yeah. So. So you go and you, your quality, right? Let's just, cause, cause you and I are, are on a quality in the quality realm now. Right. And you go and you, you perform an audit and you find flaws in the system and somebody else's system. Mm -hmm. That's your job. That's what it is to find the shortcomings and get them rectified and make everything stronger as a program. Mm -hmm. And you identify these problems and we have the owner that he comes and says, well, I don't really agree with this and this and that. And you're like, well, hold on because of this document, we're held to this standard. We do this, we do that. And like, yeah, but yeah, but, but I interpret it. And I'm like, we don't work to interpretation. We work to this. And then, like, and they just talk over you, right? Every time you try to throw a rebuttal as to why mm -hmm. you found and how you found that and why it needs to be fixed. And they just talk over you. That's when I'm like, okay, you, you don't want to hear, you don't want to hear resolution. You don't, you're not here to be resolution. You want to be here and you're going to force yourself to be right. You're going to talk until you think you can convince me that I think you're right. We're not going to make any forward progress because I've now turned tuned out of this conversation. Right. I'm just waiting for you to run out of breath, <laughs> you know, but yeah. that's, that's what it is. Like I call them used cars and they just talk and talk and talk. 
and they will talk, they will work harder at proving themselves right when mm-hmm. they know they're wrong than they will just admitting mistake and and fixing it. Yeah. Yeah. Jeez, man. Like I, uh, so many examples are popping up, man. I, mean, I just, it's firing all in my head all at once. And I just can't. <laughs> uh, another one of these, how you show competence, competency is establish clear responsibility and processes for monitoring work and measuring results. Right. Mm-hmm. Uh, audits. Like we just said, right. Uh, get defining with your team. Hey, we want to conduct uh, we're changing the group focus and we're we're shifting with our customers focus, right? Right. We're going to start identifying these these bigger problems, these different things. We're we're now overlooking the small stuff that they used to get us on. We're good there now. So now they've shifted their focus onto bigger picture items. We also need to shift our focus. Mm-hmm. So with that, it's hard to get some people to change out of that mindset. Like, no, no, I have to focus on this though. Yeah, yeah. Keep an eye on that. But like, it's not we don't have to beat it into the dirt no more. You know what I mean? Yeah. I need focus up here on these big processes that the customer is saying that if we don't fix ourselves, our long-term sustainability is non-existent. Yes. And people sometimes don't understand that they're like, no, but, but there is, there is a nail in the corner of the hanger. Okay. Pick it up and throw it away. Like it's not that small. Yeah. Should it be there? No. Mm-hmm. Okay, pick it up and throw it away. We don't have to beat that into the dirt. Mm-hmm. You know what I'm saying? Yeah. Stuff like that. So so what you have to do as a lead is you have to sit down with your team and say, I want you to look at this. I want you to direct that. I want you to run this to ground. I want you and then and then report to me your findings. And then I will research and we as a group. Your peers will all review each other's work mm-hmm. and say, hey, I don't like how you put that there. You should change it in this metric so it reflects this better, mm-hmm. right? And, and it highlights this aspect and make sure we're communicating to that group that it affects, right? We mm-hmm. can't just hold it all to our chest. we got to get it out there so everybody's aware and can start making the changes. Mm-hmm. That's the kind of stuff we have to do because oftentimes, uh, I know you've experienced with your military background and with your civilian side Mm -hmm. is that uh, changing hearts and minds is probably the hardest thing to do in culture. Right. Oh yeah. And people aren't going to take it upon themselves to, to initiate change. They're going to sit back and do what they know because it's comfortable. Mm -hmm. Change is difficult. And so as the leader, you have to instill that change. Mm -hmm. Um, And it's not easy. Not always easy. Some, yeah, some, some folks take to it really well. Yeah. But others fight, fight tooth and nail, like just every day, you yep. every day you're like, why, why today? Like I'm working on this and now my day is gone sideways because you're still stuck in second gear and the rest of us are in fourth already. Mm-hmm. You know what I mean? Yeah, clearly. Uh, this reminds me of uh, this one story. It was a professor with a jar and you go and he, he starts, uh, he fills it with like big rocks first mm-hmm. and he goes, is the, is the jar full? And was like, yes, absolutely. Then he gets like some golf balls, puts more and he fits the golf balls into the jar with the rocks in it. Is the jar full now? And was like, yes, it is. And he gets like sand. He's able to pour the sand into the jar all the way. And he goes, well, is the jar full now? And he, and they all say, well, shit. I guess so. <laughs> and then he gets two beers and he pours it into the jar and then they fill up all the way. Like, so is the jar full now? <laughs> yeah. And they go, oh, fire, I guess. So what more can you put in there? And he goes like, the sand, is, the rocks are like the big important things that you have to do these. They're always going to fit. And all the others, uh, the smaller you go, the more nitpicky, kind of okay, kind of necessary, not really necessary shit. And he goes like, if you try to fill the jar with the sand first, you will have no room for the, for the rocks and for all the important shit. So I think that going back to what you were saying, like if we're trying to nitpick the sand, we're never going to have time or room for the rocks. <laughs> the rocks, but everybody else is focusing on the rocks. Yeah, yeah, that's a that's a great analogy. Yeah, I, I can't remember. That's a great analogy. Yeah, I I need to take the big items. These these massive items that if we don't get addressed are really are really going to hurt us. Mm-hmm. We need to take care of these. Yeah, but look at this pile of sand here. Yeah, we'll we'll get to it though. Like it's not. 
Yeah, it's bad, but it's not terrible, right? It's, it's bad, not. But it's not going to cripple us. Yeah, right it's now. what? What is it? It's not critical. There it is. Yeah, it's not critical. critical. Like, well, but when are we going to get to it? When are we going to get to? It? That's what they say. When are we going to get to these things? When you get the rock rocks sorted out. Yeah. And you get the rocks sorted out, and then when you get the and once the rocks are sorted, and you get the golf ball sorted, mm-hmm. and then once you get the golf ball sorted, okay, you're taking care of the sand. You know, it's just, it's it's. But people will struggle. They, it's like they have blinders on them, like a horse, and they only see mm-hmm. what's in front of them. They can't see big picture item, right? And it's it's hard to get people to see a big picture item, especially when they. I don't know if they don't have a stake in the game or they, it doesn't directly affect them, right? Right. So so money drives everything, mm-hmm. and unfortunately, right? And you say, well, how is QA tied with money? In the civilian world, it kind of is. It's not, it's not like the military Mm -hmm. in the civilian world. It kind of is, it's written in with contracts. It's this and that. And what I tried to tell people, I said, yeah, we're QA and our job is to find, find problems and resolve them. But if we go and keep failing and failing and writing these up, these thousands of minuscule things that just keep dropping our numbers down. Right. Mm -hmm. And so people go, wow, at the, at the, your top level in the company go, wow, this program's dicked up. Yeah. And then they start reading through and they're like, well, why wasn't that just taken care of? Why was that? Why was this made such a big deal? Why was this made such a big deal? Then you're flooding them with, instead of getting them to help you with the big picture items as rocks, Mm -hmm. you're getting them to focus on sand and they start going, I think we've got a problem with that leadership and that, that group. And then you get removed and they bring in somebody else who they think will do the job Mm -hmm. better. Yeah. And that's what I'm trying to tell you. Like, well, we shouldn't be this way. I'm like, well, whether you think we are, we aren't, we are, Mm -hmm. we are. And yep. so if we have enough negative marks, guess what? They're not going to fix the negative marks. I mean, they will to a degree, but they're really going to fix the person creating the person <laughs> throwing the, right. Yeah. yeah. They'll, they'll address, they'll address some of the grenades, but how do you get the grenades to stop being issues? You get rid of the person that's throwing them. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. If we're the ones throwing the grenade in the room, they're going to go, well, to stop that barrage and not, you know, onslaught. We're going to uh, let's take out the guy throwing it. Yeah, that does that logical. Anyone can admit that's logical. Uh, that kind of uh, carries over into uh, one of the other core competencies, and that's collaboration. Ooh. You know, like building partnerships and working collaboratively with others to meet shared objectives. See, and that's that. It's exactly it. It does go into the next one. What we were just talking about. Yeah we have to work together mm-hmm. as a whole unit for the program. We're all under this program. We all want to succeed. We all want money. We all want to get continued funding. So we keep getting paid. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. We got to work with the other groups. We can't just beat them into the dirt all the time. Yeah. I mean, we, we both know we could write a thousand fails mm-hmm. a day, but what does that really do in the end? Yeah. We're no further ahead. We're, we're way further behind. Right. Yeah. Like, well, then if there's a thousand issues, then that means we're really messed up as a program. Hey, we're we're an active working hanger. There's gonna be issues. Mm-hmm. It can't be perfect. Yeah. It's not gonna be perfect. You can't run ops and be perfect. It's just it's not gonna happen. It's just not gonna happen. Yeah. yeah. So you have to pick and choose the hill upon which you want to die on. Mm-hmm. But unfortunately, you get individuals out there who want to die at every ant hill or mole hill they come across. They don't want to. Hey, I'm taking Everest on and I'm going to die on that hill because that's a massive problem and we need to fix that. No, no, no. I'm going to I'm going to die on the ant mound that's at the playground at the park. Like, <laughs> this is where I choose to this is where I choose to make my stand. Right. <laughs> you know what I mean? Yeah. Uh, so when we speak collabor- uh, with collaboration, right, we're talking about working with others across organizations. OK, keyword mm-hmm. organizations, sometimes other departments that are like right next to you. To achieve a shared objective, right? If, for instance, we want a flight to get off on time. We want this part to be installed on time. We want this product to be made and delivered on time, whatever, right? We all have, we all play a part in the whole scheme of things, which is to A, sell a part or make a plane fly. Um, partner with others to get the job done. We kind of already said that. And then credit others for their contribution and accomplishment. I think that's like one of the biggest fails in many a leadership role is like, 
you don't give the credit where it's due. You kind of just absorb it. Like, yep. And I, and that's one of the things I'm slowly learning in, in this new role that I'm in. Right. Mm-hmm. Is, uh, and my boss is, 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 is he'll bring it up to me. Right. He's trying to instill some, some good stuff in him. So I'm trying to take and learn from, from him as well. Mm-hmm. Um, you know, he's like, Hey, you know, we keep pointing out flaws, but are we, are we identifying where they, where they're doing good? And you'll get some people that say, oh, they never do good. Well, then we're never doing, if they never, if they're never doing good, then we're never doing good as our job. Yeah. You know what I mean? Mm -hmm. I mean, mission, you know, quality, we're, 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 our, our goal is to find the flaws in the system, Mm -hmm. but eventually, right. If we're doing our job and we're also teaching and working together, collaborating with Mex techs, whoever's out there, Mm -hmm. Uh, eventually we should be minimizing problems. We should be creating, we should become more of a teammate than we are a police officer. Right. But people always have that negative stigma to us because they, because of people like we're talking about where they go out there and like, Oh God. And it'll get to the point. And I've tried to explain this to the crew. It'll get to the point where people won't, will stop collaborating. And the minute they see you on the floor, they'll just lock up their toolboxes and just sit there and wait wait for you to disappear. Yeah. And they're going to go, and they're going to go, well, eventually they're going to have to get back to work. So I'll just sit there till they open the toolboxes. It's not going to happen because somebody's going to go inside to their manager mm-hmm. and say, hey, we can't get no work done because so-and-so is out there like breathing down our necks. And uh, we're all afraid to do something because we're afraid they're going to nitpick the hell out of us and fail us for every little thing we do. And guess who gets that call? I get the call. <laughs> hey, what are your people doing? You're fucking up out there. Why, we can't get no work done because the way you guys are, and then, then they're going to start questioning the way I'm running things. Mm-hmm. And now shit rolls downhill. Yep. Now I got to go down there. Hey, let's smooth it over, smooth it over. And look at my individual. What are you doing? Mm-hmm. Why are you, why are you this way? Why do you want enemies here? I'm just trying to do my job and find shit wrong. Maybe this isn't for you though. Yeah. If you're going that route, this might not be, you can find problems, but, but talk to people mm-hmm. say, Hey, Hey, Hey man, you know, slide them a note. Hey man, ch- check, check that real quick. Mm-hmm. Oh, hey, thanks. Build that relationship. Right. Yeah. And then you build that sense of trust. And next time, if they really do fuck up, they'll self-disclose to you. You won't even have to find it. They'll come. Hey man, I just want to let you know. Yeah. You know, I want to, you know, like, I, I don't know if it's going to be a write up or not. I'm like, and I always operated right when I was the inspector. Well, did anybody get hurt? No. Okay. Did the asset get damaged? Uh, no, not to the point where it's unrepairable. And we had to get engineering drawings. We 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 fixed the minuscule stuff we did. Fantastic. No issue. You guys did, did what you're supposed to did do. What you're supposed to do. Yeah. And you just give me the courtesy of letting me know. Yeah. What's going on? And I, I think with that in particular, there's a huge difference between prevention and detection. You know what I mean? Mm -hmm. Like him, he's like, he's trying to detect a defect. Like you're almost to the point where you're going to induce a a defect versus prevention. Like we're thinking prevention is like where you go far and beyond to make sure like we don't, we're going to eliminate any possibility of this happening. Right. Like we're making sure you check out your tools We're making sure that, or we set policies in there. Right. So make sure that you're using the the proper equipment for the proper job, et cetera, et cetera. So the chances of you having such a problem is so much smaller Versus you just like literally sitting over them to make sure that they check out tool X <laughs> to go for. A yeah. Job. Like, like looking at him like Samuel L. Jackson from that movie, Black Steak Moan, where you're standing on the porch and his eyes are all popped out and he's just staring at you from across the yard. Like, yeah. Instead of being like that in the hangar bay, looking at him. Yeah. <laughs> I got your ass now. You know what I mean? Like, yeah. Well, what's the, uh, there was this another uh, phrase that someone told me. It's like, uh, like collaboration by submission. You know what I mean? Like, like, and it's exactly that. Like, we're going to have you collaborate because we're going to push it down on you. You're going to work with us. However, we say you will and you have and you will comply kind of thing. <laughs> like, right. That. But that's that's not leadership either. Uh, it was who was. um. Oh, my God, this is terrible. Who was the. Five star general in World War Two. Uh, uh, MacArthur. No, he was. A, he was a tank. He was a tank guy. Oh, Patton. Patton. Uh, I'm not sure if he was five, but I know he, but he was a general of those, but yeah, yeah. Pat, anyway, Patton, Patton had a, Patton had a statement where he said, you, you can't lead people by beating them over the head. Yeah. You can't like what, what lead, you know, 
collaboration by submission, what is that? That means I've beat you into the dirt enough where you just given up and you're just working with me just because you're tired of the, you're tired of the argument. You're tired of, so that's not that then it turns, it's not really collaboration anymore. It's just submission. Submission. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. That's exactly what it is. Mm-hmm. I like the, I like the definition they give here. Collaboration is the art mm-hmm. an art, right. Of bringing people together to leverage their skills, talents, and knowledge to achieve a common purpose. Collaborating creates synergy, resulting in a combined effort with greater results than those achieved by individuals. Collaboration leads to more efficient use of time and resources and the easy exchange of ideas and talent. People are more likely to be committed due to their involvement. When you collaborate and you make people feel like they're part of a team and that they're part of a greater good and goal, Mm -hmm. like they'll go above and beyond for you. Yeah. Because they believe in what they're doing and they and they like where they show up every day and they like the people that they're working with. Mm -hmm. And, and so that's what I'm trying to do now. Right. So one of the things that was brought to me, I asked the team, Hey, what's one thing that you would like to see me do differently than what the last leadership was doing? Uh, And the last leadership was excellent. Don't get me wrong. But what they said was communicate to us more, talk to us more, keep us involved, Mm -hmm. you know, uh, why are we doing things the way we're doing? Hey, you, you, I wrote this inspection, this fail up and you got rid of it. Why? Mm-hmm. Okay. So I'll start to do that. But with that though, mm-hmm. has come a lot of pushback. I've gotten rid of some fails and why? Because they were pretty, they were the sand, right? Mm-hmm. They were the sand. They weren't big items. I'm like, mm, that's bullshit. We don't need to take a hit. We don't need to have those people, the crews take a hit. We don't need to have the program take a hit for some, some minuscule stuff. Is there, like, but it's wrong. I said, I don't disagree. It's not wrong. But there's bigger things I think we could we could make issues out of than this. Right. Let's use this as a teaching. Hey, guys, you messed up. Let's. Let's learn from it. Let's adjust to it. Right. Because mm-hmm. you got to remember a lot of maintainers stuff. They're probably not. They're, they know I eat them. They know maintenance manuals. They know this and that. And you can just learn just as much from them. Hey, why are you? And you can ask them as you're floating around the floor. Hey, why are you guys doing it that way? That looks a little weird. Oh, well, it's because, and they'll, and they'll pull up drawings and steps and they'll, you can learn just as much from them as they can learn from you. And they might go, Hey, why do you guys look at those kind of things? Like to us, that doesn't seem like anything major. Oh, well, we look at it because this is one of the things uh, the customer has decided to look at and this and that. And then you make those guys on the floor aware. Oh, the customer is looking at that man, maybe I should start paying a little more attention to this thing too. Right. Right. Mm-hmm. Collaboration. Wow. Amazing. Uh, now, that, now that you brought that up, uh, as far, especially when it comes to like inspections and such. Yeah, they're identifying the sand and whatnot. They're identifying all these nitpicky. But I think they're, uh, an issue they need to grow out of where anyone out, out there needs to grow out of is to see things from a systemic point of view than not than just the actual cogwheel me- meshing with the other gear. Because... Yeah, they found the defect. Like, hey, we found nails on the on the hanger like 50 times today. Okay. So it's not the nail I want to want you to question. I want you to answer uh question like why why are there so, why is there so many nails? Right? Where are they cut where are they coming yeah, from? Yeah, don't focus. Yeah, that's exact. That's a good point, Six. That's an excellent point that I know you and I have tried to go, okay, you're finding a nail on the hanger. We keep finding the nails, they're not cleaning up. Why do we keep finding nails? Yeah. Where the hell are they coming from? Yeah. Is the ceiling falling apart? Yeah. Damn. That's a risk we, we quality should address mm-hmm. with some higher powers. Hey, we're about to have a larger problem. This roof is fucking falling in. Mm-hmm. And it's going to fall on the assets. And now we've got multi-million dollars of damage. Yeah. That's the kind of shit we should focus on, right? Yeah. That's the kind of things we need to focus on for program progression, for everyone's progression, mm-hmm. not... You guys didn't pick up these nails. Yeah. And and they might go, yeah, we did. Well, how come I'm finding them? I don't know why you're still finding nails. Yeah. And that, look, look again, beyond the horse blinders, look yeah. at the big picture. What's really going on? Here. Yeah. Like, why am I finding so many nails? What's the trend, right? Or we notice that we find what we find these nails between shifts or some shit. Okay. Maybe there's a, there's a shift problem or there's a, a shift turnover problem. Somewhere along the lines where we're between us working and us changing over, something's happening. What is the problem, right? Yeah. That's when you need to start asking the 21 questions outside of 
why didn't you guys pick up the nails? <laughs> yeah, if somebody's showing up to work with nails in their pockets mm -hmm. and they have a hole in the bottom of the pocket and they don't realize that nails are falling out. Well, well, that's that's no good. They're, they they shouldn't be dropping nails. No, that's not the right question. The question is, why is an individual bringing nails to 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 the hangar bay? Yeah, in the first place, <laughs> <laughs> right? Yeah. Why is that individual loading up his pockets, his or her pockets, with nails and walking into a fog controlled area? Yes, right. Or for all you know, like sometimes you know it could be like uh, the facility maintenance, right? When they drive through right. or they do their shit, who knows? And nine times out of ten. In instances like we're talking about nails, it it is facilities. They're coming through and they're fixing stuff. They don't have a FOD program. They don't know what FOD is. They just do their job, drop shit everywhere and move on. They don't yeah. have the same set of standards that we in the aviation realm have to adhere to due to the severity right. of, of our jobs. Right. Uh, absolutely. And then say like, we're okay, we're backing track a, a little bit, backing track backtracking yeah. <laughs> a little bit right so when you when you collaborate like you said like we involve them in the process we involve them in the decision making or at least communicate why certain things are happening when those things happen and you involve them or at least give them a little bit to know what the thought process is or the process chain is that moves into instilling trust yes right uh, gaining confidence and trust of others through honesty integrity authenticity authenticity that's a big one yes right? So we, I trust you enough to understand why we do the things we do. Whether you accept it or not is one thing, but at least I'm telling you why it's happening. I'm not just leaving you in the dark and just expect you to know what the fuck is going on. Right. Or the trust is there, right? Because we've had such a good collaboration effort, mm -hmm. we've built the, the sense of trust. And so now they're coming and like I said, self-identifying or saying, hey, 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 we're noticing this too, right? They don't have to. They're making our jobs easier. Mm -hmm. Hey, uh, we just want to know. We don't. We don't know if you guys are aware of this or not. But we've noticed uh, this other group who's been working in our right might have a group of engineers who are in there. Hey, we've noticed the uh, the engineering team coming out here and carrying uh, open liquid containers and bringing um, uh, has has waste items and not disposing properly. Oh, awesome! Thanks. Well, let me go rectify that. Hey, engineering team, not sure if you guys are aware. We do have a set of rules and policies here that we have to adhere to. And you guys are not doing this. I'm sure you're not aware. That's why this is happening. So let me make you aware. Yeah. Okay. Now I've got you all on the same page and we're all squared away. If I find this again, it's your ass. Yeah. You know what I mean? Yeah. But that's but that's how it should be initially. We should we should be communicating uh that kind of stuff. The instills trust, like you just said, yeah, is that sense of, and then like you were saying, and like what you're saying, like when they trust you enough to, they'll be able to, they can tell on their own mistakes. Hey, it's letting you know I fucked up. They trust you enough to tell you for what <laughs> to, to know that you're not going to bury them, yeah, right away. Because because the minute you do that, right? Hey, hey, six. I just want to let you know, um, you know, I I I left a tool up in there. Um, when I went to do the ops check, the surface moved and I uh, hit the tool and it had a uh, small amount of damage. Um, damage is blended, been measured. It's within tolerances. We're, we're working. We're working the cleanup of it. We have the we have repair procedures for that kind of small damage. Yeah. Awesome. Fantastic. Thanks for letting me know. So that way, if I'm doing an inspection in that area later, I'm going, what the fuck is this? You know mm -hmm. what I mean? What happened here? Right. I didn't see no write ups for that. You know what I mean? Mm hmm. Um, trust trust across the board yep so let's look at this a little bit more um trust lies at the heart of effective relationships whether in or out of the workplace trust generates feelings of goodwill and enables successful collaboration hmm? see mm -hmm. how it ties in and more productive outcomes when there is trust things go more smoothly being trustworthy is about being honest and authentic, as you said. Mm -hmm. It is about acting with integrity, showing consistency, and being credible. If you are trusted, it means others can count on you to deliver and look and to look after their highest interest. Trust is based on reciprocity. You need to give it to get it. Yes. Say it ain't so. Yeah. Oh, my God. Right then and there, dude. I know how so many people that fail in that notion, right? Like it's kind of like it kind of goes hand in hand with respect, too, right? I don't I don't respect you enough to trust you kind of thing. Yeah. Right? Or it's kind of hard for me to respect you when you consistently throw me under the bus. Right. Right. 
like you keep you keep burning me. I, I keep trying to bring issues up to you so we can work together and you're burning me on everything. Guess what I'm not going to do? Six, you've burned me the last five times I've tried to bring issues up to you and I've gotten buried each time. Mm. Guess what I'm not doing? Oh, fuck that up. I ain't saying shit. I ain't yeah. saying nothing to nobody. Good luck to the next person who finds it. Right. Yeah. Uh, there's another one. Uh, I want to totally mention this on this last round table with uh, Cruise Corner and uh, women with an F up mind. It's uh, a le- when a leader calls you out in front of everybody, right? So like you have like this big group, you're giving this whole spill about um, fuck up X, right? Mm-hmm. And it's like, let me tell you more about fuck up X. Come up here, so-and-so. Like, right? Instantly, right? With that person, if he had any sort of relationship with you, it instantly turns negative. I was like, oh, cool. You want to blast me in front of everybody? Guess what? I'm never going to do in front of you yeah. ever again. <laughs> I mean, we just had we just had today a, a new major, mm-hmm. uh, young young major on there. And he he went on a tirade. He was not in the room. He was on on the conference call mm-hmm. and went on a tirade. And we had some old dogs, retired dogs who are on the civilian side now. Mm-hmm. And when they hung up the phone, the local Air Force in the room, they looked at them and said, now, we all know that's not the right way to communicate. Mm-hmm. And we'll leave it to you, Captain, to work that through your command. Because <laughs> that will be the last time. And these are these guys are colonels, light colonels. Mm-hmm. Um, uh, we have uh, we have a, an old, he was the, like, Europe, Europe, uh, like second in, in command for the like uh, like an Africom or Euro- European swing. Yeah, he was high in the chain. Ooh. And the way he talks, he commands the room. He knows, right? He's mm-hmm. had that experience. Yep. But when that conversation was over, he takes his glasses off slowly, looks at the captain. And that captain, even though this man is now a civilian and this guy is still uniformed, he knows who he was mm-hmm. and who he is. And so there's still that trust and respect there. Right. And he goes, you and I both know that's not how we communicate. And I trust you'll see it. Yes, sir. I'll see it done. Jeez. Uniform to civilian. Blew my mind. But but you don't have to be, you don't have to wear that uniform. You don't have to wear the crown to say mm-hmm. I'm king, right? What was that uh, Game of Thrones? Any man yeah. who, has to says he's, has to say, who has to say he's king is no true king? Yeah, absolutely. Uh, man, I can tell you so many instances where some individuals, both military and non- where like they just feel they they fall in love with a title right and they feel that title instantly means respect and trust it goes straight to the dome i'm this now and you have to like no you were a piece of shit as a mech on the floor with me and you're a piece of shit now as a supervisor like nothing's changing you the only thing is your head ballooned out yeah absolutely you know and then and they'll get hung up on this too right like you will respect me you will trust me you will uh practice what i tell you and then they go off and fuck off and do something else completely different from what they just said. Like, well, time the fuck up, man. Like, yeah, if then, I'm, then it goes to the do as I say and not as I do. Right. And yeah. that's, if that's one way to burn a bridge that, or if, that, if there's any way to burn a bridge, that's definitely one of it. Well, and you and I have both of them. We've been, been in those situations where we've had people direct us or command us like that. Mm-hmm. You will do this. You will do that. Well, you just wouldn't do this. No, no, no. The thing about me is about you. Do as I say, not as I do. Well, bitch, I'm going out of my way now to ensure that you don't look good. Yeah, right. You know what I mean? Right. It's like, I- I'm going to make it that much less of a concern of mine to make this happen now. Yeah. Now, I'm I'm going to do enough so. Because it's not me who has to go sit in front of the, the, the commander. Yep. It's not me who has to go sit and sit in front of uh, the review board. And this yes. And that. You got more to lose in this, this dog fight than I do. Right. So good luck. Right. I'm going to do whatever it takes me to keep myself and my team out of trouble. And I'm going to let you take all the heat because that's what you want. Right. <laughs> that's a terrible mindset. Does everybody is letting you know that that's terrible? But some individuals need that hard reset. Like, e- you're only here because A, someone put you here or and B, like we uh, took it with a great with a grain of faith that you would do do better and you didn't. So some people got to be hemmed up, man. Yeah. Some people got to be hemmed up. That's just how <laughs> It's like getting this, uh, I've said it a hundred times, I think on this podcast, but I'll say again, it's getting a stop sign in an intersection. Somebody's going to have to get hit before the city's <laughs> going to put one in there. I mean, that's just the way it is. It is just the way it is, man. How do you show competency for instilling trust though? Follow through on your commitments. If you tell somebody you're going to do something, do it. Because for me, 
if you tell me you're going to do something and you're harping on it, you say, I need you to do this, but I will ensure I get this done. And then I've done held up my part and mm-hmm. you've done nothing on your end. I've poop gone. Yep. I, you're a clown to me. I, mm-hmm. you, you're a person's only as good as their word. And once you lose that, you, you, you're nothing. Mm-hmm. Um, are seen as direct and truthful. You have to, you have to be direct and truthful to be seen as direct and truthful. You, it takes time. You can't just come and say, I'm direct and truthful. Prove it. Right. Yeah. You have to practice what you preach. Yes. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? Yeah, you, have like, to, oh. you have to get out there and, and do that. And then the word's going to get around. Hey, go talk, go talk to MVP. Go talk to six. Hey, I got a problem. What can do? Best I can do is send you that direction. Just think about us in our last jobs. Oh. We had we had every shop league coming to us mm-hmm. for guidance and direction because their own leadership was unwilling or unable oh my God. to give them the proper direction. So they would come to us and say, Hey, we've got this issue. How should we move forward? Yeah. And that and that's kind of like been the spark of the whole podcast in general, right? Uh, and they would like just vent their frustrations like, hey, my manager or my lead or my supervisor wants me to do this. I really don't think that's a good idea. And like, well, hold up, man. Like, let's take a look at this from the the party looking in scale, right? Mm-hmm. Like, let, let's look at this with a, another set of eyes. And sometimes their frustrations are valid. Like, yeah, I can see why you're pissed or I can see why uh, this is how you f- is how it's panning out. And then sometimes it's the other way around. Like, well, your manager's kind of right. And he just probably doesn't know how to talk to people or whatever the hell. Yeah. I mean, like the direction they want to go is correct. They're just, their execution is a little weak. Yeah. Right. The end goal is the right, but how they want to get there is a little obscure. mm -hmm. Um, How do you think you should get there? That's what we would ask them a hundred times out of 10. Well, I think we should do that. Sounds like that's the way you want to go. It can Mm -hmm. be done safe in accordance with processes and procedures. Mm Mm-hmm. Uh, and we get our goal done on time and under budget. Mm-hmm. Fantastic. Press forward. Oh, my boss is going to be a little upset. Gonna, we'll send him my way. Yeah. I think that's the biggest one too, man. Is like, well, if he's got problems, tell him to come see me. Right. Yeah. And then, then, then I think that's a, a big way to instill trust with somebody is if like they feel that you got their back. You got their back. Yeah. yeah. So keep confidences. Right. So they will come in and talk to us. Mm-hmm. Hey, man, I don't, my boss is being a turd. You know, he's saying all these things. I don't agree with it. Hey, man, let me help you and we'll do what we just said, but keep that confidences and move forward. Have their back. Don't then call their supervisor and go, yo, guess who is just over here bitching and moaning about you? Yeah. Oh right. Because then they're going to get back to their own office and they're going to be like, so you have a problem with me? And that dude, you've killed the trust there. That person's like, well, never going to six and MVP again. That blew up in my face. Yeah. Right. Uh, I remember like so many instances, both civilian and military, where you confided in somebody, right? Like you told them some pretty deep shit or something, you know, like that's assumed that the doors were closed. And then you go right, you go three steps away and then you hear the exact same thing from somebody else. Like time the fuck out. Like, how the hell did you know? The only other person I told was person X. Oh, there it is. Start playing that phone tag game back the line. You're like, ah, okay. Yeah. Show consistency between words and actions. Ooh, that's exactly what you just said with the, yep. your word is your bond kind of thing. <laughs> yeah, you're, you're, you're only as good as your word. Mm-hmm. So if you tell everybody that you're going to back them up and you're going to do this and this is how we're going to do, but then you go and do the exact opposite back to the, we'll do as I say, not as I do. Then everyone's like, who knows what this person wants? They're They're giving us no direction. They're telling us to go over here, but they're, I'm hearing them talk over here that that that's not the way they want to go. So you and I have a conversation, right? We come to a path forward. I go to execute. And then another person comes out and says, MVP, what are you? Shoreline comes out and says, MVP, what are you doing? Mm-hmm. So, well, Six and I came up with this plan and this is how we decided to move forward. That's not the conversation Six and I had. What conversation did you have? You know, like, mm-hmm. why would we come to this and him go and tell you we're going to go a different route to make me look bad, to make me what's happening, right? Mm-hmm. And then, then the trust is gone. We have not collaborated. Yeah. We're, <laughs> our collaboration was n- poor execution, mm-hmm. which led to a lack of trust right. from there on. Right. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, we, and we mentioned already, I'm going to kind of expl- expand on that. Explain. Explain. <laughs> Explain. Expand on it more when we were talking about like how sometimes you need 
to view things from a different perspective. Like maybe your frustrations are valid or maybe you're blowing this a little bit out of proportion, right? Just a little bit or a lot, whatever, right? But the key is you got to um, value so the differences in others' perspective, right? Value differences, right? Recognizing that different perspective and culture bring value to the company, the organization, the whatever. So one thing that always frustrated me when I would be new to an organization is that they would discredit any experience I've had to that point. Mm -hmm. Um, And that always frustrated me. They always treated you like you were day one out of tech school or whatever. And you're like, I'm not, I'm new here, but I'm not new to the game, you know? Yeah. Like I have some valid inputs I have and, you know, I have something to contribute something mm-hmm. positive to contribute. And what I'm even learning now within my own program, right. Mm-hmm. Is because I've built that sense of trust. Right. And then now being in the leadership role, I get Max text come to me, not even disclosing information, just coming, Hey, what I'm noticing this. What do you think we should do? Like, what do you think I should do? I want to fix this. Here's what I think we should do. Perfect. Right. Run with it. But how do you run with it? You can't run to your boss and say, the way you're operating is fucked up. <laughs> it's not going to work. It's going to blow up in your face because now you, you've you insulted him, right? Because he yeah. thinks he's doing whatever he thinks is right. Mm-hmm. He or she thinks is right. I told him, I just had this conversation yesterday. Start at the lowest level. Mm-hmm. Work, instill these changes amongst your peers. And then it'll start flowing up from there. Right. And eventually your boss is going to get him like, we're doing what? Oh. What seems to be actually working out very well. I said, that's, that's how you do it at your level until you get yourself in a position where you can hit it from top down. Mm -hmm. You got to run bottom up. Yep. Absolutely. I remember, uh, uh, this was from a coworker of us, of ours, like some time ago, he's called it a boiling the frog. (laughs) I don't know if you remember that. Yeah. yeah. You know, like if you, if you, if the water's already boiling, you drop the frog and it's going to jump right out. Mm -hmm. But if the water's cold and then you put the frog in and you slowly crank the temp, It'd be, bo- it'd be cooked boiling. You won't even notice. <laughs> yeah, he, he'd just be there. Yeah. He thinks it's a hot tub. <laughs> <laughs> right. Before you know it, he's soup. Yeah. Um, yeah. Um, and so, then- so one of the things, right, to, to kind of incorporate in this with just what I was talking about, having people come up and say, hey, I want to make these changes. I think it's the way to go. Do you think this is the way to go? Mm-hmm. Yes, I do. Now, some of these individuals who are coming to me, I've never worked with in my life prior to here. Mm-hmm. Some of these individuals I've worked with for over a decade, mm-hmm. but they're new to the program. I've been here before them, mm-hmm. but they're coming to me because they know how I am and how I operate. We have that history. We have that sense of trust. We've collaborated in the past mm-hmm. of a similar mindset. So, Hey, this is a, this is a little different operations here. I'm kind of struggling. Can you explain to me this? I think we should operate this way. I 100% agree with you, man. Um, I'm trying to push it from my end. It's going to be a lot faster for you to hit it at your end. You start at the bottom. I'll start at the top. We'll meet in the middle before you know it. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. I've also seen the opposite of this, where someone comes in from a different cultural mindset. And instead of trying to adapt their experiences to the current task at hand, they try to mold the task to what they used to know. Right? It sounds like California is moving to literally any other state. Mm-hmm. We're leaving California because we hate po- the, their politics and this and that. Only to go to wherever they move to and try to do the same thing. Well, that's how we did it over there. So we should do it here. Homie, that's what you just left. Like, why are you, <laughs> what are you doing? Yeah. Now, now I agree with you. There is, because it's all they know mm-hmm. and they don't want to adapt to the new, oh shoot, there's something going on here that I don't know. Nope. I'm going to fix it to where it's what I know mm-hmm. because that's what I'm comfortable with. And that's how I think I'm going to add value. Mm-hmm. So in often case, like you said, you're reverting productivity yeah or, or for progression excuse me progression yep you're revert you're reversing that mm-hmm. you you aren't trying to come in and learn what's happening with this you're coming and going i i don't know what's happening here so i want to do this this and this now yeah because that's what i'm comfortable with and everybody else there is going what 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 is this we've never done this before mm-hmm. don't take offense to this but I have seen that out of most veterans, retirees. Yeah, I'm, I'm not taking offense at all, uh, and I and I can attest to this. Light, like 
you know, I mean, 20 plus years, Mm -hmm. 30 plus year vets who were some of that I'm working with. And because it's all they knew since they were 18 or 19 Mm -hmm. and now they're in their forties, fifties, whatever. And that's been brainwashed into them. Yep. They've had no other experience other than that. So they're saying this is the right way. But a lot of us who came from the civilian side, like it's not, it's not, doesn't have to be the way. This is the way. It doesn't have to be the way. This, yeah, you bring some good points, but that's not, that's not all that's there. Yeah. Here's your good points. Here's your not so good points. Here's some points where I think from my other experiences, let's collaborate and put mm-hmm. those together to make the big thing. But oftentimes they're so just, uh, I, this is, um, this is me and me alone. And when I change this, it's going to be on me. When the success happens, it's on me. Mm-hmm. So that that kind of remind that kind of reminds me of like uh like say transfer students right they always they always have that back in my old school story you know yeah. back in my old school we used to do X back in my old school like well homie deal I don't know what to tell you you're not there no more <laughs> right and, that, and I see that with you know new Mex and Tex coming in well with my last job well this isn't this ain't your last job yeah well my last job we do this a lot my last job we were allowed to walk over tow bars when they were connected to the tug and the aircraft. Fant- oh, fantastic oh, fantastic but we're not allowed that here yeah. so well that's stupid i don't disagree uh i feel like i can step over a tow bar with ease without damaging myself or any asset mm-hmm. but it is what it is yeah i didn't write it it's it's a air force mandated requirement mm-hmm. that we not step over those tow bars now if you can objectively show me after some time right like after some observations of yours right like well i prove in time for like the past x amount of weeks months whatever that stepping over tow bar is not dangerous here's my reasons why and i feel we should probably look into this if you approach it like that okay uh, we, there's some validity to it but if you just flat out said this is fucking dumb yeah but also i also kind of view those as the sand mm-hmm. problems right yeah you're really gonna bitch and moan and fight and die on that ant hill on that little pile of sand over stepping over a tow bar yeah Dude, just, yeah. just Stockholm syndrome that one and walk around. You know what I mean? <laughs> yeah. Find a more important problem to, yeah. to, to, to rectify. Yeah, like instead of like, uh, why why can't we cross the tow bar and worry more about how you guys just roll the plane into the freaking dirt because you forgot to put or you forgot to take out the locking pin or some shit. Right, yeah. <laughs> Let's talk about that one. You didn't, t- check your, you didn't check your tow bar shear pin. So when you went to move and you turn the tug... You turn the tug ninety to the one, to one side, and the plane still moves forward because the shear pin's gone. Right. Like, or or what was another one? Like uh, they forgot to turn the aircraft off before they, or they forgot to make sure the aircraft had no power before they plugged in, and then they the landing gear started to retract, and then it almost went belly down on the front. Oh, oh, god. <laughs> oh my god! Oh, I don't know what happened. I didn't like, do my safer maintenance. Pre power on checks or weird, weird. <laughs> weird. Uh, Let's see here. What else do we have under values differences? All right, valuing differences creates a work environment where people can and want to do their best. Oh, weird, weird. <laughs> Working effectively in this diverse world starts with self awareness, considering how you handle bias. Poor treatment and conflict in demonstrating that you value others. Mm-hmm. To be effective, you will not ignore differences. You will understand, embrace, accommodate, and encourage them. Valuing differences will help you learn and benefit from the wealth of knowledge and experience that diversity brings. It opens doors to new ways of thinking and new opportunities for building the success of the organization. Again, if I have a team, mm-hmm. right? So let's just say for for inspectors, I have a, a team of inspectors and this person's a structures person, this person's engines, this person's AVI. Mm-hmm. Well, okay, here's what I want you to do. Uh, I want you to be involved when there's anything going on with one of those systems. Mm-hmm. I also want you reviewing maintenance manuals and figuring out where there are shortcomings at and submitting change requests mm-hmm. to the manuals. I want you working hand in hand with those specific shops and figuring out what they think are shortcomings and where they need help fixing the problems. Cause they might be running into roadblocks via their own management. You can help push past that. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. I also see this, uh, the value differences, like say, I, I feel like this is nitpicking or picking on the new guy, right? Like, 
well, we got all the experience. This guy has nothing. So we kind of just treat you like shit. Like, well, maybe he's new to the game or maybe he's new to the line of work, but he's smarter than other shit. Right? Yeah. It's very rare. You find an individual who's brand new and knows fucking nothing, like yeah. literally nothing. Right. So they might not be too savvy with, with maintenance on the aircraft itself or with understanding each system's operation or with, with how you are documenting your maintenance and this and that. But they might be computer savvy. Mm-hmm. They might go in there and say, oh, man, I put it, I put this input into the forms and something messed up. Oh, hold on. Let me see that. Right. Ah, there we go. It was just a broken formula. I fixed it for you. Oh, shit. Where'd you learn that? Oh, my last gig. You know what I mean? Yeah. It's like, oh, I learned this back in high school. I'm like, fuck, man, what kind of high school did you go to? Yeah. Was that STEM school? Like, Yeah. I went to some bojangle school like you know, <laughs> podunks you know like but anyways uh um everybody brings value somewhere right yeah they if they have a willingness to learn that's it that's it man that's it uh and bringing all this down right because you can have all this all this correct or semi-correct but if your ultimate goal is not focused to what the customer wants you might as well just be a fucking like a shit show you right know? what's a business without a customer yeah or what what where what good's a race if there's no finish line you know right yeah <laughs> that's exactly it so like we're talking about customer focus you know we're talking like building strong internal external customer relations and delivering what the customer expects for a solution right because you can tell me all day long that this used car is the best thing fucking ever but if that's not what i'm expecting you're never going to get that car sold right <laughs> Yeah, I, I came to the dealership looking for a sports car, mm-hmm. and you're trying to pass me off on a sedan. Well, it has four wheels, has doors, has a radio. Mm-hmm. Uh, what's the difference? It doesn't look the way I want it to look. <laughs> it doesn't have some of the internals that I want it to have. Yeah, yeah, but it'll get you point A to point B. I agree, sure, mm-hmm. but... I am expecting this. I talked to whoever on the phone. They said they would provide me this service Mm -hmm. and I'm expecting that service. And if you can't get that service, they will find somebody else who can. Right. And then especially from our point of view, since we're dealing especially with customer expectations. So if the customer expects like such and such uh, reduction in defects, that's what we got to give them. Mm -hmm. Now, certain demands are a little bit over the top. I can admit that sometimes the customer is a little bit more uh nitpicky than they should but you can't just tell them like you're fucking wrong customer like there's no way in hell we can do this without some kind of proof (laughs) exactly right just and i'm learning this is one of the things i'm learning in my new role too from my from my superiors right who've been Mm -hmm. in the game a lot longer just because they want something Mm -hmm. doesn't mean they're going to get it yep contracts right Mm -hmm. going into contracts i want hey i want you guys to start tracking this i want you to start doing that i want you to start doing this well, Mr. Customer, you can want all day long, but the deal you agreed to didn't incorporate that. Well, I didn't know, realize it, but I want it now. Cool. Add that in at the next contract cycle. Like, yeah. For now, you can eat it. Yeah. You know, yeah. Track it yourself. <laughs> <laughs> and it's true. And now, most times, right, we'll be accommodating depending on the request. Yeah. Depending on the request, hey, you guys mind looking at this for us or checking on this? Yeah, it's not part of our statement of work. We'll help you out, right? Building, building trust and collaborating, mm-hmm. and all mm-hmm. those, and and all those other things. Uh, the customer goes, "Hey, yeah, we've asked for." And then when it comes to contracts, I go, "Hey, uh, we asked for some stuff out of pocket, mm-hmm. uh, not really contractually based. They did provide it for us. Mm-hmm. Um, mm-hmm. I think now we throw X amount of dollars more at them." Yeah for that effort this next time around. We need yeah. to make sure we get them additional funding to continue that for us. Otherwise. Yeah. We're kind of SOL. We're kind of SOL. Yeah. yeah. And that kind of goes into like predicting what the customer may want. Right. This kind of goes into marketing for most of you, but if you can predict what the customer may want, you can almost anticipate what he would expect. Right. Mm-hmm. So like, well, the cus- well, the customer knows that they want um, like better convenience or uh little less noise or whatever the fuck it is. Right. So you can kind of gear that in that direction, not saying completely revamp everything, but you can kind of sort of like guess what they want. And then when they, when they 
finally voice it out. Like, oh, okay, cool. We already got something in the works already. Oh, fuck. You know? Yeah. It's kind of it's kind of like ones where like uh, you go in for a service and then they they really can they can really accommodate without you asking. Like, oh, fuck. Well, yeah. Like you might have taken your car to the dealership to get the oil change that morning. I think when I'm done with the oil change, I'm going to take it and get it washed. And then when you go to pick it up after the oil change, you figured out that they had it washed for you. Like, oh, shit. Cool. Yeah. That just saves me saves me an extra step that I had to do today. Mm-hmm, mm-hmm. You know, they took it upon themselves for me, just like you said. And it's hard to anticipate, but if you have that little bit open line of communication with them, you'll you'll um you'll 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 hook it up. They'll come mm-hmm. and say, Hey, um, you know, we've started uh you know, amongst ourselves questioning this, questioning that, and we would like to start tracking these metrics. Stand by. Oh my God, you guys have already been tracking it for the last six months. You already have a database built. Yeah, it's, you know, we just thought it was probably some good information to have. So we were tracking it on our own, but if you guys can use it, fantastic. Yeah. You know, absolutely. Um, there was a, there's another one I wanted to bring up that tied in directly with that. And um, for the light, life of me, it's kind of eluding me. Uh, it kind of goes into like, um, uh, how do you say, not hooking the customer up, but, like uh, communicating with them to the point where like whenever they act, whenever you say something, you're going to deliver it. <laughs> right. Yeah. Like, Hey, no, don't you worry about it. We got this. We're going to make this happen. And that, that builds trust uh, with the customer and retains the customer. That's a big one. Right. It's no point in, in selling something where, you know, he's never coming back. Right. Yeah. Uh, that goes into the used car salesman thing when you were talking about like, Well, he bought the car. Fuck him. <laughs> yeah. And that's exactly, that's exactly how I kind of view it. Like when I keep, getting steamrolled in a conversation I'm like oh you don't want to have a conversation mm-hmm. you just want me to accept what you think mm-hmm. nah, that's the way it is sucks to suck mm-hmm. like you accepted it from this way so now you're going to eat you're going to eat this this metric you know you're going to eat this audit you're going to eat this mm-hmm. fail you're going to eat this product yeah whatever the case is yeah and then that'd be the last so like yeah they'll buy it because you sucked them into the to the one where they can't back out but guarantee they're never coming back again <laughs> True. And then that can mean jobs and all kinds of shit. So the most important people in any organization are customers. Those who please customers the most will win. Mm -hmm. Winning organizations are always customer oriented and responsive. Being successful means continuously paying attention to customer needs and adapting as these evolve. I think we've harped on that a couple on a couple of different points this evening. Mm hmm. A uh, focus on customer op- customers opens up thinking, drives innovation, and creates a responsive and agile organization. For something we've been saying for years, being proactive instead of reactive. Ooh. <laughs> Ooh. That's something we've talked about for four years now. I think. Yeah, say it ain't so. Proactive instead of reactive, rather than or prevention versus detection. Right. Right. Like if we're if the customer is detecting the problems, we're already fucked up. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Or. Um, if we're reacting, like you said, instead of being proactive, then we have already fucked up. Well, just like just like we were talking, you're focusing on the sand. The customer's focusing on rocks. Why are you not addressing the rocks issues? How come the customer is pointing out these massive rock issues to us mm-hmm. and all we're seeing is sand? Yeah. Oof. What What are we doing? Well, eventually they're going to look at the sand. Yeah. After they beat us to death over rocks and golf balls you know what i mean like <laughs> yeah, they're gonna yeah. stuff those rocks and golf balls into a sock and hit us like homie the clown like <laughs> homie don't play that and smash us with it you know like yeah that's what's gonna happen yeah it's like oh yeah like uh what is it especially with contracting uh what's the what's the bad term uh contract relief i think it is or mm-hmm. um yeah, contract relief or contract revocate, uh, revoke, whatever. Yeah, something along the lines like yeah. Um, so we're just gonna go ahead and pay out our little get out of jail clause and uh, go fuck yourself. Yeah, we are so ha- we are so unhappy with what's going on right now that we are willing to spend, let's just say, fifteen million dollars just to fucking not have to deal with you anymore. <laughs> like, and companies like, all right, cool, we'll take the fifteen mil. Yeah, well, that's a one time fifteen mil. That's not a returning 15 mil. That's not a coming every three months, 15 mil. Mm -hmm. That's a one-time payment in pound sand. And you don't think that customer is going to talk to other customers and their friends because other customers who you're trying to get, get contracts with, they're going to go, Hey, I think so-and-so had a contract with them. Wonder why they dropped them. Mm -hmm. Hey, what happened over there? Oh, homie, let me tell you. Right. And then that person goes, man, 
thanks for the heads up. Mm -hmm. I'm going to avoid that headache. And that happens enough times. And then we all know, we all know the outcomes. Yeah. Or like, like say another one is like certain airlines. Uh, I'm not going to mention who, but everyone can kind of take a guess where they start making memes of them just because of how shitty they are and how bad they suck at customer retention. You know, like most people, it's one of those like, well, I got nothing better and they're the only thing open right now. And, and whatever, it's like 50 bucks. Screw it. I'll, I'll take that dive one time, but I ain't coming back. <laughs> you know? Yeah. So, so they kind of see it as well. Like, oh, right, yeah, we got one customer. Great. But it's not, you're not going to make money by getting one time only. You know, you always got to gener- keep generating that new retention or that new uh, air quote business because you know, if you only got a one timer and it was what the lowest rate possible, there's no way in hell you're going to be able to flex those rates or increase you're eventually going to die off. <laughs> yeah. I mean, that's exactly what's going to happen. You're, you, you failed to adapt. You failed to change. So the world changes around you. Your customer changes around you. Mm-hmm. If you can't meet those demands. Mm-hmm. Bye. Yeah. A good example of that on the flip side of it, like doing actually doing great is like all these companies that have switched over to uh, online um, shopping, for instance, mm-hmm. right? Like, any, if you even had a brick and mortar shop and you didn't have like some kind of an online shop, you were basically boarded up for good, you know? Yeah. I mean, everything's online now. Yeah. Everything. Um, like you said, those mom and pops that couldn't adapt with the times and didn't, no, 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 that's just a fad. It'll, it'll pass. Mm-hmm. No, what passes your, your brick and mortar. Mm-hmm. It's now a blown out empty shell of what it once was, you know? Yeah. <laughs> and then that's kind of the same with the aviation realm too, for like, uh, customers nowadays, they want in, in onboard Wi-Fi, they want onboard lighting, they want onboard like amenities. And if you can't provide that or if it's not reliable enough, chances are you're never going to get well, them again. Well, hell, even from the maintenance aspect, some of these new jets, at least in the corporate realm, they're coming and they're telling you what their tire pressure is Yeah, in the cockpit. They, they, want, they want the ability to plug a computer in or not and just run a diagnostics and it'll tell you everything that's wrong with it on the jet. Yeah. You know, it'll tell you whatever little bad cough and achy joint it's got, you know? <laughs> <laughs> right. But again, that goes back to the customer focus. Like, what does he want? Right. And why do they want that? Right. Yeah. To save time, to save money. Mm-hmm. If they don't have to pay one of us to be out there for 18 hours trying to troubleshoot a problem down mm-hmm. and they can already have a point to start at. Hey, looks like igniter two and engine engine one is uh, is intermittent. Yep. Rajo, start there. We've already got an igniter on the way. So by the time you show up, the igniter's there, swap it, perform a run, mm-hmm. and let's see what the result is, right? Yep. Instead of going there, all right, well, let me do this. Let me do that. Let me make some calls. Now I'm waiting on a part. Mm-hmm. You know, now they figured out what's wrong. Okay, they troubleshot it down to the igniter. Now that's been 10 hours. <clears throat> yep. Now so- I've got to order parts. Oh, but it's, it's 11 o'clock at night and that shit's not going to make it there till noon the next day. Mm-hmm. You know, that's what it comes down to. Yep. So, yeah. And especially in the roles that we are now in these management slash influential roles, it's all about convenience, speed and cost. That's really it. Yeah. You know, so for those of you that are in some kind of role like this, where you have to interact with a customer, customers, if it doesn't, if it doesn't address convenience, speed and cost, it's my, it's, it's a wash. Like, just wrap it up. You're done. <laughs> yep. And that kind of boils into like what we're talking about, the facets of leadership or um, core competencies. If you can't understand any of this, just hang it up, man. <laughs> yeah. It's not for you. Whatever, whatever you're in, it's not for you. <laughs> right. Uh, if you're, if you're com- contemplating, looking at moving into any role, mm-hmm. right. Well, as we've said, you can, you can use these at your lowest level mm-hmm. to change hearts and minds, but if you're contemplating moving into a leadership role at all, you need need to learn these competencies and and actively work at uh, making them part of your daily practices. Because I, I know for me, right? For me, mm-hmm. I've only recently learned uh, what these were. Mm-hmm. Um, never actually read anything about core competencies before, but now being in a leadership role, um, my job is not just focusing on the customer needs and the day-to-day operations and this and that it's personnel Mm -hmm. dealing with personnel and and applying these to handling personnel when they feel some type of way Mm -hmm. or they think something should be something and you have to uh, 
you know, prove to them why and instill that, you know, and get that trust. So they, when you show them why we're doing things a certain way, they believe you, they accept you and they adapt. Right. Mm -hmm. Absolutely. Uh, my final thought on all this is like, uh, you kind of hit the final thought already and you, and I'm trying to just summarize some of this. So, uh, like what MVP was saying, if you are thinking at all of moving into some kind of leadership role, uh, practice at the lowest level. That's really it. And you may think like, well, I don't really have anything to do with convenience, speed or cost. I mean, yeah, you do. You do very you much do, so. You very much so. But say your cost now is not money. It's more so time, right? Like the convenient, well, the convenience, speed and cost ultimately starts at that lowest level. Right. How fast can you do your job? How efficiently can you do your job? Mm -hmm. And how quickly can you relay that to your spirits? You can relay it up the chain. Like, yeah. It's it starts at that low level. Yep. And then sometimes, you know, like some people are more costly, not so much money, but more so on the time spent to double back on their work. That that rolls into cost. That rolls yep. into convenience. That rolls into speed. If you did a job, but you have no no like your your team doesn't trust you, mm -hmm. they're going to you're gonna come in and say, Oh, I took care of that. Mm, I'm just gonna go verify that that was done right. So now I've doubled the time for one task mm -hmm. because one individual didn't trust the other. Right. Yeah. And I know and we, we can share you guys the article about this, of all this and that you have your thoughts and, and feelings about it. That's one thing, but I think this is pretty objective of what everyone who's even thought about being in some kind of a leading role should know. <laughs> yeah. And, and like we were saying throughout most of this, we are learning this as we're going. Uh, we've had some experiences with this on certain aspects and then some we are we're expanding to more strategic and extra strategic <laughs> sides of this. So we're constantly evolving and we admit that there's never going to be a person who's a hardcore expert, no matter how seasoned they think they are. <laughs> right. I had a, uh, a soccer coach in high school who was from uh, Zambia mm -hmm. in Africa, and uh, he always said, you know, we always had people and you say, you're doing this wrong. You're doing that. Oh, I know. I know. Well, if you know, then why are you doing it wrong? He always said the day you stop learning is the day you die. Mm -hmm. He goes, you stop learning when you're dead. Yep. That's when learning stops. Otherwise you should always be open to new concepts, ideas, and challenging yourself to meet those. Man, that's pretty big. <laughs> that's deep. Yeah. And then that's, and uh, on that, uh, that's probably like the best thing to end on is like, always be learning, always be willing to adapt and always be willing to take new perspectives because the second you stop, you're either dead or obsolete. <laughs> that's it. That's it. Huh? On that note. <laughs> Bye, everybody. Bye, everybody. <laughs> We'd like to take this time to thank our patrons for supporting our show and allowing us to continue to make episodes, maintain our gear and create merch for all of our listeners with special thanks to Erica Lamont, Chris Hawkins. Ryan Freshour, Dan Schubert, Jenny Dignan, and the ladies of the Dick Talk and Mimosas podcast. Thank you all so much for your support and patronage. Visit our shop at cancelformaintenance.com and grab some swag to show off both your support for us and your prowess as an aircraft technician. If you have ideas for the show or you'd like to be a guest on the show, visit our contact us section and send us a line. We will do what we can to get your ideas or yourself on the show. You can also follow us on social media, such as on Facebook at Cancel for Maintenance, Instagram at Kanks, that's C-A-N-X for Maintenance Podcast, or on Twitter at CXMX Podcast. Check out some of our affiliates like Rockwell Time, where they make both rugged and classy watches to fit your lifestyle. Use the code CX4MX and save 10% off your purchase. Support us on Patreon. Our patrons get exclusive perks such as access to our Discord, discounts and early access to merch, special patron-only episodes, and so much more. Thank you again so much for listening, and we'll see you next time.